Tammy Slayton is that morbidly obese sister we didn't want in our lives, but here we are. Try being my size, Amy. You don't know how it is. I don't know about y'all, but I discovered Tammy about eight years ago. I was living in Montana at the time. It was snowing outside, so there wasn't much to do. So I opened up YouTube and I came across this video, which was the Chubby Bunny Challenge with her and Amy. I didn't know who these women were yet. I just knew that from the thumbnail, their heads were so fat that they resembled pumpkins. Chubby Bunny. <laughs> Chubby Bunny. For those of you that aren't familiar with the Chubby Bunny Challenge, it was a trend on YouTube years ago where you stick marshmallows in your mouth and you fill your mouth up and say Chubby Bunny, and when you can't say Chubby Bunny anymore, you lose. I'm one of those people that once I notice something, I fixate on that one thing. And for me, it was Tammy's rhinoceros horn. I didn't know what it was, so I Googled it after watching the video, and it's called a fat pocket. And as the name is Jess, it's a buildup of fat in her head. My bad too, if I sound a little nasally, I'm a little bit sick, but I'm taking medication, I'm drinking coffee, I'm gonna feel better in the next couple of days. I just wanna make sure I actually sat down and made this video because I ghosted y'all for a couple of weeks. I apologize for that. It was my friend's birthday and we went to Portugal. We had a great time. However, I'm gonna work on the communication for my up and coming vacations. I'm going to give y'all advance notice so you know. So yeah, apologize for that, but happy to be back. We're currently on season four of Thousand Pound Sisters, Tammy and Amy Slayton's very successful show on TLC. The first three seasons, there were extreme highs and lows because Tammy did not take her weight loss journey seriously and it resulted in her almost dying on camera and off camera. However, the good news is this last season, Tammy has really impressed everyone because after a near death experience, she started taking her weight loss journey seriously. To be honest, a lot of fans found Tammy very irritating because for years, her family has been trying to help her and especially her sister, Amy because she took her weight loss journey seriously. She got the surgery. She started progressing in her life. She had children. She got a husband. I think watching her siblings succeed in terms of their weight loss journey while she wasn't made Tammy feel really bad about herself. And it put her in a very negative mind space to where she would say constantly negative things. If anyone offered to help her, she would have a very bratty attitude and dismiss them. So this rubbed a lot of fans the wrong way because everyone's just thinking to themselves, yo, your family, and friends and even the fans of the show are trying to help you you shouldn't have that kind of approach or outlook on the situation. However, in this latest season, Tammy was placed in this rehab facility in Ohio, which was a very positive experience for her life. Before we continue reviewing this reality TV garbage, I'd like to tell you about today's video sponsor, Galaxy Lamps 2.0. The Galaxy Lamp fills your room with mesmerizing lights, resembling the galaxy. I set my own Galaxy Lamp on top of my PC. That way I can look at calming lights while I'm running it down mid lane in League of Legends. It's honestly God like having the Northern Lights in your room, which is so relaxing. You can download the phone app, which allows you to adjust the lighting setting to whatever vibe you're currently feeling from the comfort of your bed. Galaxy Lamp comes with color variations, adjustable speed rotations, and timers and schedules. Also thoughts for food. It's really good for date night. Imagine laying down in bed with your partner, staring at the Galaxy, talking about how in the infinite universe you found each other. The Galaxy Lamp's housing comes with a button that is preloaded with six settings, perfect for any room. Not to mention it's also safe for kids and pet friendly. My big stinky bear Gilly loves our Galaxy Lamp. If y'all are interested in getting started with Galaxy Lamps, use the link in the bio of this video or go to galaxylamps.co slash yourwetsock and use code yourwetsock for 15% off your first order. Initially, while living in this rehab facility, it was very uncomfortable for Tammy to face herself, exercise regularly, and be held accountable. Not to mention her family was an eight hour drive away, so she felt very isolated. Eight hours is a long time to be on the road. Tammy's family did not visit her that frequently on this present season. Not seeing her family was very taxing for Tammy's mental health because since childhood, she's always had her sister, Amy. Growing up for these two in Kentucky was real rough. You know, sure, there's an abundance of fried chicken, but their mother neglected them. You see, Mama Slayton was busy working three jobs just to scrape by, so she sent Tammy and Amy to their grandmother's house. Their dad was unfortunately not in the picture, so I'm assuming he went to go get milk and never came back. The good news was for Tammy and Amy, they really enjoyed living at their grandmother's house. She was very nurturing. They enjoyed watching TV with her. However, unfortunately, when Tammy was 12 and Amy was 10, she passed away. In comes the bad news. Because Grandma passed away, Tammy and Amy once again had to live with their mother who emotionally neglected them and constantly made them feel like they were wrong for feeling the things they did. She really tried to make them believe that emotions were a sign of weakness. And for her, it's like your kids have emotional needs. If you're someone that can't satisfy your children's emotional needs, 
Maybe you shouldn't have children. Mom's off working all the time. Tammy and Amy are home alone back to back. They only had each other to rely on. And unfortunately at this time, this is when they really started to develop these unhealthy eating habits. Obviously growing up with an emotionally unavailable parent impacts your relationships and how you process your emotions throughout your life. So when I see Tammy wilding out in this relationship with Caleb, I'm not surprised. Can't you remember like back in the days we could eat a whole pot of chili? A sheet cake. <laughs> in our last video, we discussed Tammy Slane's love life. She got engaged to her stalker, Caleb Willingham, after only a couple weeks of knowing him. To make matters messier, Caleb openly admitted to Tammy and everyone else in the room that he was in this rehab facility because of her. What brought you here, though? You. What the hell? I guess when they got married, she changed her name on TikTok to Tammy Willingham, so she took his last name. However, she changed it back to Slayton. Not to mention, she also stopped posting him on her social media accounts, so a lot of fans believe that they're no longer together present day. There's more reasons that fans speculate that they're no longer together, and I'm gonna be getting to those reasons in this three-piece combo we're making on their relationship. Right now, let's look at that iconic scene when Tammy tells her family that she's engaged to a man from the same rehab facility as her named Caleb. I'm going to... Tell my family, your girl's engaged. Oh wow, Tammy, you silly goose. Her using a man as a distraction from hitting her personal goals comes as no surprise to the audience because she's done that in the past as well with a lot of feeders. Before this unexpected news from Tammy, Amanda invited the rest of the family members over to her house to set up some fall decorations and have a visit. Next thing you know, they get this unexpected FaceTime from Tammy who drops a bombshell on them and that's that she's getting married to a stranger. He's also a fan and was a fan of her in the show before entering this relationship with her and actually moving from his home state of India to the same rehab facility in Ohio to be closer to her. Which is not only sus, right away there's a little bit of a power imbalance because he knows way more about her than she knows about him. When Tammy tells her family the good news, they are absolutely dumbfounded. Emotional hunger is usually caused by deprivation of childhood and as y'all know, Tammy's been hungry for a long time. Usually when you grow up without something as a kid, you spend the rest of your life chasing that very thing but in another person. How long have you known this guy? I've been with Caleb for a month now. Moving kind of quick, ain't you? <laughs> All right, on a scale of one to 10, how bothered is Tammy right now hearing the truth from her sister, Amanda? <laughs> so when is the big day? November 19th. Two weeks away. Nah, she hit her family with the two weeks notice. Imagine that. Imagine this is your sister, our morbidly obese sister over here. We invest all this time and energy and money into getting her better, getting her in this weight loss facility. We're excited because she's finally hitting those personal goals. She qualified for the surgery. She's finally gonna get to a healthier weight. She's still gonna be obese, but not as bad, right? Tammy deciding to go through with this is so disrespectful to her family, in my opinion, because you should want their opinion about who you're planning on spending the rest of your life with. At least give them the opportunity to meet this man before you agree to spend the rest of your life with him. Also, it's rude for her to give her family two weeks notice because it's an eight hour drive to the weight loss facility where she's going to marry Caleb. A lot of her brothers and sisters have families, they have jobs. Like that just seems very inconsiderate in my opinion, but let me know what you think in the comments. Amanda says to the audience, two weeks, are you freaking kidding me? I mean, I would like to know your first and last name before my sister goes and takes your last name. Her frustration is understandable. We would all feel some type of way about our sister marrying someone we've never met before. Not to mention it's mathematically impossible to get to know someone's character in only one month. A big reason why Caleb and Tammy's relationship works is because they have a lot of things in common. They're in the same rehab facility on the same schedule, having the same experience, what's gonna happen when they leave the facility? Or if one of them leaves the facility and one doesn't, which is the case currently. Tammy left the rehab facility present day, Caleb's still there, and there's a lot of talk that they're no longer together. Tammy actually made a promise to herself that she would never date someone her size. Yet, fast forward, she's in this relationship with Caleb. Caleb has broken just about every promise he made to himself, which is why he's in the rehab facility. This might seem really elementary, but it's so real, and you'd be surprised how many people break the promises to themselves, but why would you want to enter a relationship with someone that doesn't keep the promises that they made to themselves? We have to become the love of our life if we want to attract the love of our life. We don't spend time with anyone more than ourselves. So if you're breaking the promises you make to yourself, of course you're gonna break the promises you made to your partner. And of course, if we're all marriage, you're going to attract someone that's also breaking promises. She's always loved hard and loved fast. I'm talking, there was this one guy that she told she loved him too an hour after they met. <laughs> 
Honestly, are we surprised that it only took one hour for Tammy to tell a guy that she loves him? He must have looked like a cheeseburger or something. I never felt this way about anybody. Jokes aside though, there's a huge problem with Tammy and Caleb that I see, and that's that they don't realize the gravity of the things they say. They both have moved so fast in this relationship, and they will constantly say things like they want to spend the rest of their lives together without actually knowing each other's character or getting to know each other in different settings. They've only ever known each other in the rehab facility. It feels like they're very immature, and I'm watching a fifth grade relationship. Side note, about a month ago, Tammy posted a video on TikTok with Caleb trying freeze-dried snacks, and that video did really well. It got around 4 million views, so it low-key, high cheek kind of blew up. I watched the video and thought to myself, all right, all right, all right. I've never had freeze dried snacks before. I was feeling slightly adventurous. So I went to the candy store to try them and they were absolute garbage. Yeah, I had the surgery. Yes, but he's working on it. So how's that going to be when you get to come home and he has to stay there? And we're going to work on both of us leaving at the same time. I mean, I can understand that, but I don't see him making that goal in the short amount of time that she has. Okay, this right here is a great example of why Tammy and her older sister Amanda bump heads a lot. Amanda is more realistic in terms of love because she's currently going through a divorce. She has tried to make a relationship work for a number of years that didn't work. She had children with this person. She has way more experience under her belt in realistic relationships than Tammy does. Tammy's more delusional because she's never had a real relationship in her entire life. Throughout this entire conversation with her family, Tammy is trying to justify marrying Caleb and walking down the aisle with him without actually getting to know him first. And her family is very skeptical and they're asking very valid questions. Tammy has no answer for their valid questions. While Amanda and Tammy are going back and forth, Amy looks very disturbed because she's genuinely concerned for her sister. Amy then asked Tammy when she's gonna be cleared by the facility so that she can come home and Tammy responds, I don't know. Right now Tammy's getting really hot and bothered because her family isn't giving her the answer that she wanted to hear. She wanted her family to congratulate her and just celebrate the fact that she's engaged to a real life person. If her family just congratulated her and didn't care, didn't ask follow up questions, questions about this man or his character, it would show that they didn't care about her. Even though Tammy's constantly doing that baby face filter on Instagram and other social media platforms, we have to remember that this is a 36 year old woman. And from her immature responses, it seems like she's either got a bad case of inbred brain or Peter Pan syndrome, maybe a blend of both. I'm not a doctor, so I can't tell. She's doing that too fast. No, you shouldn't just leap in the You shouldn't, you should just wait a little I bit. Don't, yeah. Don't dive in. Be together for a little bit. <laughs> okay, I agree with what Amy's saying here. It's just hard to take her seriously because she's got paint on her face because her kid painted on her face and then she's got purple hair. You know, my biggest thing is, is that I just went through a divorce that was tough. It's tough on a person mentally and if Tammy were to ever have to go through that, I just don't know where that would put her. Hey, I completely agree with Amanda. Tammy has always been in love with the idea of being in love. She's wanted her life to feel like a Disney movie where she's the princess and then Prince Charming shows up on horseback. Now we gotta manage expectations because instead she got Caleb in a wheelchair, right? This is a very niche expectations versus reality situation. Tammy's older sister Amanda communicates to the audience that she's actually baffled that Tammy wants to take this step and get married to someone because it's such a huge life decision. And not to mention Tammy's entire support system, which is her family, doesn't know Caleb. That's, you know, to Tammy and Caleb, we see them in the rehab facility talking to their millions of fans. This right here is Caleb's big moment. Man has waited a year to be on the show with Tammy. Tammy says to her fans, hey y'all, I told you the other day we decided to get married. Then Caleb being the Rizzler he is says, I know what happened quick, but she's just so sweet. I had to take the chance. I know what happened quick, but she was just so sweet. I, I had to take a chance. Caleb Casanova back at it again, making Tammy feel like she's the most specialist girl in the whole world. Tammy goes on to explain to her audience that she's gonna have their wedding at the rehab facility because a lot of her friends are at the rehab facility and they're too fat to go anywhere. Tammy feels like it's more convenient for everyone if she has the wedding at the rehab facility with the exception of her family because it's an eight hour drive, but at the same time, they can drive eight hours, her friends in the rehab facility can't leave. So it makes sense because this is the first time that Tammy has had this sense of community and had this many friends to be honest. Usually she was more isolated. And like I said earlier, it felt like she was getting left behind because the rest of her family members were progressing in life, but she wasn't. Where is the first place you're gonna travel? Leave me. And don't say hi. Go to the bed. Oh man. Hey, first of all, the bed could be anywhere. Thank you, you better stop. Oh wow, it's getting hot in here, huh? The bed can be anywhere. This might be a dumb question, but how did they have sex? I'm not trying to be a dick or anything. I just don't really understand how they go about having sex because it seems like every time they stand up, it's like deadlifting hundreds of pounds and it seems like they're in a lot of pain. So like, does she lay down on her back? 
Maybe we don't talk about it because last time I said that Tammy was wet and y'all had some problems with that in the comments. So maybe we avoid talking about their sex life. I'm just genuinely curious how they go about clapping cheeks because it seems really difficult when you're this immobile. Caleb tells Tammy that he would follow her anywhere, even a haunted house. And she's like, oh shoot, he <laughs> he. Tammy then once again tells the audience that she loves Caleb because he's just like her. Caleb isn't like Tammy in any way, shape or form. They just have both made terrible life decisions. A huge red flag I see with Caleb that I haven't seen anyone bring up is that he doesn't talk talk about anything not having to do with their relationship. He constantly says things like, girl, you smell good. I want to smell you forever. Oh, baby, I knew that you were the one. Well, I like a challenge. I like being with you, Tammy. Tammy, you make me feel so good. Like everything that this man says is about their relationship or his like undying love for her. We don't know what kind of movies he likes. We don't know what his favorite color is. We don't know anything about this dude because he only talks about them and their relationship. How many times have I told you that all I want to do is hold you later the next scene and hold you? I've been reviewing reality TV shows on YouTube for years and I've never seen someone love bomb another person as much as Caleb has love bombed Tammy. Cutting over to Amy and Chris, they're at the gym about to get their swole on and Amy's looking forward to talking to Chris about the Caleb situation. Both Chris and his wife seem like very grounded human beings. They've been very supportive for Tammy and her life and her weight loss journey throughout the years. Not to mention Chris makes fire barbecue. So count me in. If you're having a barbecue, Chris, um, can I please come? About 10 minutes on that auto. It'll probably kill you, but you know, well, it'll at least be started. We got a big bomb dropped on us when Tammy called. Amy's wearing a shirt that says I'm kind of a big deal and I agree. I actually respect Tammy and Amy because they started off as YouTubers before going on TLC. It's not like the creatures on 90 Day Fiance that just got that free handout. And I love Asian women, you know why? After engaging in a bit of small talk, the siblings discuss Tammy marrying a man that she's only known for about a month. Tammy got engaged. Mm-hmm. And in 14 days, she's planning on getting hitched. Chris says his reaction is this shit isn't real. And then he starts hysterically laughing. When he was laughing, I felt this because the man just has to laugh through all the bad decisions his sister makes. What else is he going to do? He adds that Tammy needs to get their approval before she just runs off and marries some dude. So he doesn't know what she's thinking about right now. And then Amy admits to the audience that she didn't believe Tammy at first. She thought that she was just joking with her until she sent the video of Caleb proposing to her outside of the facility. The conversation starts heating up because Amy informs Chris that this man actually moved to Tammy same rehab facility to be closer to her. He only went to that facility because he found out Tammy was in that facility. So I'm like, I don't know if the man's a stalker or silly caroler. Hey, Amy, when are you gonna drop that True Crimes channel? Don't be teasing us like that. Cutting over to Tammy and Amy FaceTiming. Tammy asks Amy if she will be her bridesmaid and Amy accepts, even though she doesn't agree with her sister walking down the aisle with Caleb because she doesn't even know this man and she doesn't think that her sister even knows this man. She still agreed, which is really nice that she still agreed, even though she doesn't agree with her sister's decision. I'll definitely be your bridesmaid. I love you unconditionally. Two weeks later, the fan band is driving up to the rehab facility to meet Caleb for the first time and set up for the wedding. The only two family members that didn't join on this car ride are Misty and Amanda. Because of their work schedule, they have to drive up tomorrow, which is the day of the wedding. Chris says to the audience that he feels like his sister's protector because they grew up without a father. Chris also adds that he's going to tell Caleb exactly what he thinks about him, which I'm so excited for him to grill this dude because Chris is a straight shooter and he doesn't lie. Cutting over to Tammy, she's in her silly goose era doing silly things. She's talking to Caleb and she informs him that her family's going to arrive and then he starts violently coughing and it seems like he's going to die. Like he's coughing so uncontrollably and Tammy's saying things like, tie your oxygen tube, Caleb. Caleb admits to the audience that he's very nervous to meet Tammy's family because he really wants them to like him. He proceeds to cough like crazy and Tammy says, why are you wheezing? <laughs> Fast forward to the meeting, Tammy's whole family walks in. Chris puts Glenn right in front of Tammy and says this is the most important thing and Tammy's overjoyed to see her entire family. Only one itty bitty little problem. While Tammy's playing with baby Glenn, Caleb made some very out of pocket comments. Little Glenn. He is too happy to see you. Look at the baby. What are you gonna do when we have our own? <laughs> Y'all see what I'm saying? Caleb is a love bomber that constantly says cap shit like this. What are you gonna do when we have our own? What a ridiculous thing to say in front of this girl's family. Listen to me, you bubblegut kid. You can't even see your cock, right? You're morbidly obese with a track in your throat in a rehab facility to lose weight. Why are you talking about kids? Something in the distant future, something that you don't even know if you're going to ever achieve because y'all don't even seem like you're together anymore. So this is something that a lot of dudes do and I really don't like it. It's not romantic. It's not cute. 
It's manipulative. You tell girls what you think they want to hear, what you assume they want to hear so that they can over romanticize you in their mind. After Kayla makes this very inappropriate comment in front of her entire family, it is so awkward in this room. It's like all the air got sucked out. For him, you might want to hold off on your love bombing and cap ass comments until her family leaves. And you know, she's easier to manipulate once she's isolated. Now it's going to be trickier because her family can see through your bullshit. I think a lot of fans are wary of Caleb for a reason. Anyone can fake it for three episodes on a reality TV show. It's not that hard to match someone's energy, especially when you're familiar with Tammy because you've watched her a lot before meeting her in real life. Also, we know from her sister that Tammy told to do that she loved him after only knowing him for an hour. So with her, it's like fishing with dynamite. After this terrible first impression, Caleb awkwardly introduces himself to her family. Despite what was said, Tammy's siblings handled the situation with a lot of class. They were very respectful to Caleb, where I feel like a lot of us would have told this googly eyed motherfucker that he's out of his mind to say some cap shit like that. Like get yourself healthy and get checked out of the rehab facility before you're talking about children, you kid. Let's talk about something positive now. Chris compliments his sister, Tammy, because this is the healthiest he's ever seen her. I'm really proud of you because everything, you look so, so wonderful. This was a really sweet moment because for Chris, it's like he has so many years trying to get Tammy to take the weight loss journey seriously. So for her to do it on her own at the facility, he's over the moon that she really got the reins on her own life and fixed herself. She's still got a journey to go because you know, it's constant maintenance with your body concerned. I'm fully aware of that, but it is a huge milestone for her. And I'm happy that he acknowledged that. More good news, Tammy's starting to breathe on her own. She's very close to getting the trach pulled out and being able to go home with her family. However, she informs her family that she'll probably remain in the facility with Caleb until he's also ready to leave. Upon hearing this news, her family asks Caleb how he's progressing with his own weight loss journey. How close are you? I mean, I'm not too far behind her, but you know, a little bit. I, I actually coded a couple times here, but I feel like God kept me alive for a reason. And a lot of that reason I believe is sitting right next to me. Tammy's nodding like he just did something here. Actions speak louder than words do, Caleb. Dude's red flag. This family could give a shit why God kept you alive, Caleb. They asked a question about what your fitness journey is looking like, what goals you're hitting. Of course, this dude gave an answer about how God kept him alive because he can meet Tammy and Tammy's an angel. It was written in the stars, me and Tammy. Tammy's my motivation. Tammy's the one that saved my life and she gave me a reason to keep living. Like, dude, shut the fuck up. Talk about what strides you're hitting or how your weight loss journey is going. You have to make every situation about this romantic connection you have with Tammy. Tammy's the one that saved my life. I think she might put herself in a predicament to get a heartbreak later. Because what happens if he's not able to ever leave that facility and she's home? 1000% I agree with Chris. He goes on to ask Caleb if he would be down to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him later. Caleb then says, I'm gonna take a breathing treatment and then let's talk later. Before Caleb drives away, he says that Chris seems very intimidating. He has a low voice and he doesn't know what kind of questions he's gonna ask him. Right now, Amy and Chris's wife, Brittany, are helping Tammy pick out a wedding dress. We haven't talked much about Chris's wife, Brittany. Short summary on her, she's a very religious woman. She dresses modestly. She seems like a grounded human being and someone that gives everybody a fair shake. In fact, during the car ride over to the facility, she was saying things like, we should get to know Caleb and understand his character before making a decision about what type of man he is. When Tammy tries on the wedding dress that she's really feeling, she starts doing her dancey dance. She's super happy. She looks like that penguin meme. No, not that one, this one. Hit it, hit it, get it, get it, hit it, hit it, get it, get it. Tammy, you have a dress. Bitch. Can I get a yas? I'm slut. <laughs> this is a really nice moment, especially because Tammy used to be so negative in the past. Even though she's rushing things in this relationship with Caleb, I'm happy that they're having a heartwarming moment like this. And she's so appreciative for her family for being there for her. Now, Tammy does admit to the audience that she's very nervous for this private conversation that her older brother, Chris, is about to have with Caleb. Tammy's really lucky to have a big brother like Chris stepping up to the plate and trying to get a good read on this man's character before she walks down the aisle and swears before friends, God, loved ones, to spend the rest of her life with him. I just don't like that I don't have the time to get to know you the way I feel I should properly get to know you. My age, 39. Never been arrested, not once. No police record, no, no run-ins. Caleb's smirk bothers a lot of fans and I understand why after watching this episode, it seems like every answer he gives is premeditated. Not to mention he gave Chris the dead fish handshake, which if you're a bro, you know right away that means a dude's not trustworthy. Pretty sure it's universally known that when you meet another man, you squeeze his hand and you look him in the eyes. Cause that's what men do, men do manly things. 
<laughs> Tammy's had some people in her past that was not a really good influence on her. She started partying hard. Hell, she was partying hard. Just to be clear, when Chris is saying things like, Tammy used to party hard, he's referring to her ordering like 12 Domino's pizzas, 12 sodies, maybe a little moonshine, staying at home. Like she wasn't going out to the club and twerking or anything. And this family partying hard is like being the embodiment of the sin of gluttony. Do you party? Are you gonna end up bringing that back into the world? No plans of that at all. Honestly, I'm, I'm trying to get better myself, you know? Now for Caleb, it's nice to know that he doesn't plan on partying and he's trying to get better himself. However, he clearly lacks self-control, which is why he's been in these rehab facilities for the past couple years. It's not the same thing, but if my sister was gonna date a meth addict and I asked him if he's clean from meth and he says, no, no I'm not clean, I'm not yet, clean yet, but I'm gonna be I'm clean, gonna be but clean, but I'm gonna be clean, I'm not clean yet, no, but I'm gonna be I'm gonna be screams, talk whispers, I would feel more comfortable if you were clean before you dated my sister, let alone married her. So I can only imagine what Chris is feeling right now. What kind of jobs have you held up, you know, in the past? I've done a little bit of everything. I mean, I've uh, trimmed trees, uh, fast food work. <laughs> okay, wait a second. How much of a red flag is it that this man, Caleb, is 39 years old? The only two jobs he can name off the top of his head that he's worked is trimming trees and working in fast food restaurants. Wait, so he says he's done a bit of everything but only listed two jobs. And both jobs, it's like... I don't think your fat ass can trim trees. I don't think you should work in a fast food restaurant if you have a really unhealthy relationship with food. You know, really right now the big deal is He's not able to physically, right at the moment, go out and get a physical job and make sure the bills are met in the house. That's what I worry about. Absolutely, Chris, that's a legitimate concern, man. My concern, if I were in your position, would be Tammy makes a lot of money from being on the show. Caleb seems like an underachiever, so right away, I would want more for my sister. She's a reality TV celebrity, she has a big following. We all think that Tammy can do better than Caleb. Chris goes on to say that he prays for his sister's happiness, he wants her to live her best life, and he doesn't want Caleb to be a liability and hold her back. I've never felt like this before. I've never been this motivated. Like, you have no idea how heart felt every single moment in my life is because of your sister. Chris goes on to say to the audience that he wants to believe what Caleb is saying is coming from a genuine place, but the proof is in the pudding. Chris is really good vibes. He's hands down my favorite person on the show. In our next episode, we're gonna be covering the royal wedding. It's the closest to a royal wedding the state of Ohio has ever had. <laughs> in our next and final installment of this three-piece combo on Caleb and Tammy's relationship, we will also see what their relationship status is like currently. I'm talking going full stock creeper mode. I'm gonna stalk you, Caleb. What happens when the stalker gets stalked? I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. If you want some one-on-one -on -one time with me, please order a cameo. I'm the number one cameo creator in the entire world. Super thankful you watch my videos. Comment below, subscribe. Follow me on Twitch and on Instagram right now.